which you just create and have fun creating basically. So um as everyone should know, we would be recording this call. So for people that are not here, they can check out our YouTube and find this video also. All right. So um if this is your first time in this um, session, right? This is called Asha sessions, right? And we do it like every every Saturday in the week. There's only one Saturday, so like every Saturday, different forms of designers come around and host a, se a session on anything. It can be AR, it can be um, 3D, it can be blockchain, and all those things, right? And um, it's hosted by a design um, community called Asha Kuteri. I'm, I'm trying to allow a lot of people in. Okay. Yeah, Asha Kuteri, right? It's a design community with lots of different forms of designers, motion, game design, VR designers, product designers, um, illustrators, and all those things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be your host for today. Uh, my name is John Wright, um, I'm also in AR, right? But I'm doing blockchain currently. And um, today's session is about shaping reality with AR, right? I know everyone might have come across AR probably on the Instagram, the Snapchat, you know, if you create games, you actually have like, AR tool in your hands, basically, and AR has been amazing, and it's it has its boom in Nigeria in COVID times, you know, when everyone no way at all. So I, so with us today is um, Ibrahim Salami. He, I, I don't like saying boss, but like he's a beast when it comes to AR, right? And the reason why I say he's a beast because he recently just started exploring that field and um, what is dishing out is amazing, like AR games and all those kind of stuff. So he is well equipped to take us through this reality. So Dr. Strange, what's up? <laughs> Did you just call me Dr. Strange? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Well, right. I, I'm good, I'm good. It's amazing to be here with you, um, uh, John. I mean, it feels like a podcast, you know? <laughs> I've, I've, I've already found you can. So, like, introduce yourself so they will know who is speaking, then you can just go straight to the point. Uh, okay, so, um, hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. I trust we had uh, a stress at each free week, and we're also having an amazing weekend. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Salami, and I'm a product designer and product manager uh, at Umongos is IO, uh, based in the US. Um, I am an XR enthusiast, uh, meaning uh, an extended reality enthusiast. And like John said, I recently just transitioned into um, that niche of design. And I must say it has been really, really amazing. And I'm glad to be here to you know share one or two uh, from the little I know. Uh, as John rightly taught me. So yeah, it's really nice to be here and nice to have the wonderful people here too. I don't know why you said that though. You're not, <laughs> an, you're not an enthusiast, right? You're already in the field. And two, I didn't teach you anything. So please continue. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you very much again, John. I, I really appreciate it. So, um, <clears throat> Once again, hi everyone. Um, we're going to be having, uh, I, I promise this is going to be an interesting and fun field session for all of us. And I'm sure we're all excited for the things, for the amazing things we're going to be learning from this session. And let's note, I'm learning, you're learning, I mean, we're all learning. So um, the topic is shaping reality with AR. But before we go, let's have a bit of a background. You see, a scholar or a great scientist once first said, he said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. 
and involve me and I learn. These are the words of Sun Kwang in a bit to explain immersive technology. In a bit to explain immersive technology. In 1968, an inquisitive man whose name is Ivan Sutherland was one of the formal scientists exploring uh, evolved technology at this time. Um, and he's one of the starters of the augmented reality. And he started with the first head mounted uh, um, headset. Um, and that was how augmented reality came to um, become. And from then to now, it has continued to evolve and things have been changing. The immersiveness of this technology has been immense and it's really been exciting. I'm sure most of us, we, um, when it comes to massive technology, I was talking, I'm talking about um, having headsets, having adboards and all. You know, there's this, there's this fun part of when you go to shop rides and you see people wearing something on their head, sitting in a chair and all, and you see them screaming. You know, some people's babes are always shouting and they get to record them and post them on social media. So at that point in time, those people are actually experiencing um, this immersive technology I'm talking about. And one of those immersive technology is augmented um, reality. And that is what we're going to look at. I'm going to look at how it is shaping our current um, reality. So what are the things we're going to take out from this chat of ours? The first thing is we're going to learn, um, get to know what augmented reality is. And we're also going to see um, the types of augmented reality. And we're going to see how um, AR applies to our reality, how it's actually shaping our, our reality. And also <clears throat> we're going to um, learn how to, or see how to build for AR and look at some of the careers you can get yourself into as far as augmented reality is concerned. And also, we're going to excuse me, take a look at some of the top guys in this industry and have a brief chat on the future of augmented reality. Um, if you're with me, uh, I'd like one or a couple of people to tell me how they feel about or how they're feeling as this session is about to commence fully. I need one or two people here. And I'm seeing fine faces, great people, my bosses. So, anyone? Okay, so if you would like to say how you're feeling, you can just unmute and just say how you're feeling. But I'm feeling amazing anyways. I'm cold. But... <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Oh, you. Anyone? Um, yeah, um, this is Kels. So personally, yeah, I'm like super excited. And I actually can't wait to like see where you're going to take us through because personally, I'm very, very excited about augmented reality and virtual reality. And I see that, you know, um, you have your... You have your onions figured out. I mean, to the best of <laughs> to the best of your ability. So, yeah, so excited to see what you're sharing with us. Thanks, man. Thanks, girl. Thanks, girl. You know, your name sounds really cool. It sounds like the name of um uh Superman, Carl L. Right, John? Am I right? Uh, you well, else? <laughs> is a Superman. Like, he's a beast. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah. I'm a <laughs> thanks man thanks man i really appreciate it. another person and it's a go from here yeah any other person how are you feeling right now I don't. yes i can okay yeah. um for me personally it's shocking me let me just like my fingers are crossed um i'm i'm hoping to take away great things from here at least somebody from the industry already, AI has been shocking everybody, definitely. So please, from here to greater things. I'm hopeful. All right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. That that that's great. So um thank you very much, Samuel. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. I, I think Umu Salma is raising up our hands. Um John, uh yeah, probably you cannot mute. I mean you can unmute yourself, Salma. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Okay, so I can hide. For me, I'm not really well versed in this field, so I'm just pumped and ready to learn a lot. Like ready to take a lot home and be more curious about this new field. 
So that's me pressurizing you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks, thanks a lot, Salma. Um, I, I, I really appreciate that. So um, let's let's dive in. Let's dive in. <clears throat> so we're going to start with what augmented reality is. So let me break it down. We have the word augmented and we have the word reality. I'm sure those two words are not alien to us. We hear them a lot. We know what they mean. But just a reminder, for very, for very little reminder, I mean, it's a benefit to every one of us. So when you say something is reality, like we all know, it's a state of things um, actually, I mean, as they actually exist. For example, our floor, I mean, the ground, the way it exists, the sky, the way it exists, um, the human beings we relate with, the way they actually exist. I mean, as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of these things. So anything we see around us currently, we're seeing them live, and this is meant to be our reality. So now, what do we mean by, what is meant by augmented? Augmented simply means an addition. So you are adding something to something. Let's say, for example, I have, um, I, I have like 10 papers and I added one paper to that, um, let's say a bunch of papers. So what I've done is that I have increased that particular bunch by augmenting it, by adding to it. So essentially you are augment, augment, augmentation is simply you adding to something that's existing. So combining these two words, augmented reality, it means you are adding something to an existing reality. So and in the breakdown i have here it means you are enhancing reality reality and how do you ex enhance reality you are simply combining something that is real and something that is not real you are combining something that is physical and tangible to something that is virtual something that is not real so i'll give you an example <clears throat> you have um for example you have um jupiter and Jupiter is something most of us have not seen before physically. And we have our, let's say, the earth, I mean, let's say the, the ground. Everybody knows what the ground looks like. Now, imagine somebody now placing Jupiter right in front of you. Now, Jupiter, in they now made Jupiter a digital object, like something like an illustration or a picture or an image or something, but it doesn't really exist. Then it is placed on the ground just in front of you. So this is a combination of something that is abstract, something that is not real, something that is virtual in a physical space that is our existing reality. So what you what you've done ex ex I mean, what has been done here is that you have enhanced reality by placing something that is not real in a real environment. So it gives you a composite view. And one other thing augmented reality does for us is it gives us a means to express ourselves. Like you can really go very, very, very wild. Like your wildest imagination. It makes me remember um, two things. The first one is when we were very young, um, there's this play. I mean, I don't know. Um, there's this play we used to do when we were small. They call it daddy and mommy. I'm sure most of us when we were young, we did it. I don't know. Sorry, if you did daddy and mommy, can you just, can you just say hi? You did daddy and mommy when you were young. Hi. Hi. Ah, Agba. You were daddy, right? <laughs> no, I was <laughs> mommy. All right. So, so thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. So, everyone, most of us actually did this daddy and mommy stuff. It's, it's, I mean, uh, maybe some people had better plays or things they did when they were younger. Uh, but for people like us, we did daddy and mommy a lot at backyard. So, one of the things we used to say is, can you pay? Um, in, is a Yoruba word for imagine that, or let's assume that. So we, we say, I am so, so, and so. I have a car. All these things are thoughts. All these things are ideas. So what I mean, what I mean by expression is the fact that you can bring out the craziest in idea in your mind and make it be as if it truly, truly exists. So sometimes you are you're reading a novel, and when you're reading, a, let's say, a fictional novel, for example, and you read the novel and you get like some wild ideas of, of some things you pictured from the novel. So with augmented reality, you can bring these things to life. And as we move on, we're going to see how um, this applies to our reality. Now, 
Stop talking about what augmented reality is. We have devices you use for augmented reality. You have head up displays, uh, you have smart glasses, and you have handheld devices. So the head up display is something, for example, you can find in your windshield. So there are some smart windshields or some cars, and some have manufactured, some are in prototype stage. So they allow you to actually navigate while driving. So you can actually see some navigation, your speedometer, your fuel gauge, this i mean the turning you're supposed to make and all this so these are this is an example of head up display and it can i mean you can find it in smart windshield or as nigerian call it windscreen so now we also have smart glasses smart glasses like hololens and and you know some of us know the vr headset so vr headset is for virtual rea virtual reality and some of them actually combines both virtual and I mean, augmented reality. So for example, Oculus does that very, very well. And you have one that is, I mean, mainly for augmented reality and you have the HoloLens from Microsoft. Then you have the handheld device. I mean, all of us, all of us. And that's another beautiful thing about um, augmented reality. There is a device for everybody. Everybody has an AR device with them currently, right now. So, and you have your smartphones, your smartphone itself or in itself is um, a, is an unheld AR device. As long as it has a smart camera, um, it is good to go as an AR device. Now that we've understood this, let's move on. We have types of AR, we have types of AR. But before I talk about the types, I want anyone enjoying the session so, I mean, so, I mean, let's unmute yourself and say hi again. <laughs> if you're enjoying this. Hi, 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 hi. Hi. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Hi. 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 Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. So now, <clears throat> we have um, different types of um, AR ranging from... Um, Ranging from the marker base with, to the markerless, to the location base, to the superimposition, and also the projection base. So we're going to look at them one after the other. So now, let's start with the marker base. So the marker base AR is an augmented reality that identifies physical objects or physical images, and also 3D models with the help of AR applications. Now, when your augmented reality app for example, is open. Let's say you have um, let's a very good example is Snapchat. So when you open up um, what's it called um, your your Snapchat and you point your camera at something, it brings out this filter on someone's face. So and at, at this point, the marker like you have a target. The target in this case now is the physical image or the physical object, which is the I mean someone's face. Then when it, I mean, identifies, when the um, camera identifies that face, then it brings out the result you want. So now, as you can see in this um, <clears throat> example, that's you, uh, the GIF here. So you see that some, I mean, the guy has his phone or his camera with him, and he brought out his Apple card. Then he pointed his camera at the Apple card, and you see that some digital <clears throat> or some, some digital um, text icons uh, or interface came out or popped out so this essentially is a marker base a type of mark i mean marker base ar so you're having a target the card and you're having the i mean the um ar i mean the virtual objects which are the in which is the interface you can actually see that the person is interacting with it so this type of augmented reality technology is also known as recognition ar and recognition based ar or image recognition um, AR. So on the basis of marker tracking, so it, it's, it's essentially tracks and displays. Tracks and what? Displays. So essentially for this one to work, for this type of AR to work, it needs, it needs a, um, a, a target. Sorry, do we understand that? Yes. Do we understand that? Yeah, sure. So, <laughs> yes, I understand it. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, moving forward, forward, we have um, the markerless um, AR. So, what's the markerless AR? Markerless AR is very simple. 
unlike the marker based AI, where you need to point at a specific target to get um, your desired result or the digital image, I mean, objects popping out or the virtual object pop popping out, the markerless AR uh, augmented reality functions without a marker. That is, it functions without a target. And all it does is to scan your surrounding environment. So it can scan the horizontal plane, for example, your floor, or it can scan the vertical plane, for example, your wall. So it essentially scans the, scans the sur surrounding environment. So this technology allows users who want to insert virtual objects or content without moving anything in the background. So unlike the marker-based AR, the guy had to like move the what the card to interact with it. But for here and for the markerless, you don't need to like move anything. You are just simply interacting with your immediate surrounding with space. So this is what the markerless AR is about. So you can just <clears throat> so it's 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 it uh, is one of the major types of um virtual reality that is based on device location, digital compass camera, and um um, co collects, I mean, collects positional information of um, where you are scanning. So this essentially it allows mobile apps containing such feature to usually ask users for a flat surface or floor for placing the AR object to not make them always float in air. So essentially, as we move on, we are going to see how all this works and how all this applies and how they shape our reality. So now. Moving forward, we have the location-based uh, AR. So for the location-based AR, this, most, this is like one of the most implemented types of augmented reality that is used by users. It primarily, it primarily depends on GPS, digital compass, smartphone camera, and other technologies to identify location compared to a um, marker base that needs like objects or um, this thing, but this one has to do with location. So it doesn't require special markers to identify the place where the virtual object is placed. So now, like the example you can see here, or the demo you can see here, this is a Charlie Parker statue. A Charlie, pa Charlie Parker is um, a famous jazz artist in the US. He was based in Kansas. And when he died, they built a monument for him. Just like you have the monument of Awolowo, you have the monument, the monument of Tinubu, and so many other monuments around Nigeria. So the same way to um, immortalize, um, John, am I correct with that English? Immortalize, right? So <clears throat> a way to like immortalize um, John, I mean, Charlie Parker, this monument was created somewhere in Kansas, USA, if I'm correct. So an AR um, artist, thought about, oh, let me try to like create an experience around this monument. So this particular experience you are seeing now cannot be activated, except you are in Kansas where, or Kansas in the US, where this statue is. So it means that that AR function cannot work except you are at that exact spot before it gets activated. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So location-based AR need, I mean, it doesn't need any cue from the um, object to deploy, as it can predict from the user's focus to peer the real-time data. So the real-time data here is the monument, existing monument itself, with the current with the current location. So it also allows developers to showcase creative, interactive, and useful digital content to geographical points of interest. So the Charlie Parker Park now is a geographical point of interest. It also adds benefits to travelers to know their whereabouts. So for example, if you are in Ikeja and there is a particular landmark, you can just scan a landmark and you can get direction, or you can get more information about that particular um, landmark. And you do this by using 3D, virtual 3D objects, videos, text, and links, and also as well, um, audio. So um, that's basically that about the... Um, location-based AR. So moving forward, we have the superimposition AR. So for the superimposition AR, it's very, really cool. Like, it's one of the coolest, I mean, like types of AR. So it creates an alternate view of an object and can be used for like partial or full replacement of the original view 
of that object. So in this demo, you can see that there's an engine. All of us know what an engine is. So this, you can see that there was an initial view of the, en of the engine, the way it looks normally. So now, with augmented reality, it creates an alternate view of this object. And it also creates like a partial and full replacement of the entire of the orig original view of that object. So you can see the engine spanning from its original look to the what? Um, to the dismantled look. So you get like an entire view of the object or a portion of it in augmented reality. So, and you can see these people, the Oga and Madame, they are using the um, uh, HoloLens to actually view this engine. Do you understand super, superimposition here? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. The goal of superimposition AR essentially is that it provides multiple views of a target object with with a choice of highlighting the extra relevant information on that particular um, object. So also you have um, the last and final one, the um, projection based AR. So before I move further, I want to make a clarification. So. Uh, there's something called difference of opinion. So difference of opinion here is that some people will say you um you have more than five types. Some people say you have five types of AR. Some people say you have four types of AR. Some people say you have six types of AR, like that. So I'm just saying this in case you see it outside there and see some other types of AR. So I've tried, I tried as much as possible to bring all of them and compress them all into five. So the la I mean, the last one here is the projection-based AR. So the projection-based AR, essentially, this type of technology is not operated by the user. So you don't even need your phone. So like the word, I mean, uh, like the word um, tells us projection, just like our normal projector. So projection-based AR is a video projection technique that can extend or deliver digital data by projecting images on, um, on the surface of 3D objects of, of or the user's physical space. So what, what, what this essentially does is that it, it can have, have a target object, a target object, but you're not scanning anything. You're not essentially scanning anything. So what it's doing is that it will project that 3D object or that virtual object into a space. So there are now two ways. So that object can be physically dead. For example, the shoe. Now you have the shoe, which is physically dead. But the interaction with the shoe, the displays on the shoe were actually projected on that shoe. And some cases you can have nothing being on that box, for example, and you have the projection of that shoe there. So that is what is called um, um, projection based um, AR. So that is that about the types of AR. I believe we learned a lot from this and we, uh, we should be able to like, I mean, differentiate between these types of um, augmented reality. Um, moving forward, yeah, we're going to be taking a stroll to YouTube and this is where I get excited. So I want us to pay attention and yeah, enjoy. Is it me or the audio isn't um quite clear? Oh, wow. sorry, you, you can't hear the sound. Yes, it's more fold if at all. Yes, we can't hear. Oh, you can't hear. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry, John, is there a way to fix that? John, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Is there a way to fix the sound? Uh, I have no clue. <laughs> okay. But but like since it's AR, it's a very it's a very visual um. Oh, so it's visual. I mean stuff. So like you don't have people to, like, should the yeah sound, yeah you don't need the sound. You just have to look with your eyes.
Um, please mute. Uh, okay, let me just mute you. It's actually been nice if you can hear the sound. Sorry about that. But let's just, I mean, in fact, I'll talk with it. Uh, Brian, so, um, someone in yeah, the chat, so okay, all right. All right. Um, thank you very much, guys, for um, watching that video. So, yeah, we're back from our show to YouTube. So, essentially, this like is a preamble to the Hello next. Hello, everybody. My name is Aurelia Durand. I am a French graphic artist. Today, I'm going to present you the new app of Adobe. Uh, it's called Adobe. Adobe. It is an app. Sorry. Where you're from? Add the meeting. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. I thought someone add the meeting. All right. Yeah. So, um moving forward so the video essentially is directing us to somewhere i mean the next part um, of the presentation which is to see how ar is shaping our reality so essentially when we say shaping our reality we're talking about the applications of augmented reality uh in our day-to-day -day lives so now moving forward i mean we have tons of application tons of application we have tons of application of ar so we have the social media we have gaming we have art we have marketing we have education we have medicine we have logistics and also we have real estate now the social media part is something we all use every time we have social media filters we have social media filters so in social media filters we all have um we get to like try out different effects uh, for example the ones you can see on the screen you have this glowy um face effect and you have this um, um man having this kind of mask on his face so you can also see that the face now so i want to ask this question to show if you are falling or not so this kind of this filter what type of ar is it is it marker markerless superimposition anyone anyone you said marker based here. Marker, marker based AR. Thank you very much. So marker based AR because it requires the face to actually bring out the digital um object. So after I'm, I'm, I've shown you all these applications, I'm going to show you some of the works I've done and some of the projects I've done, and I'm going to allow us to like also use some of them. And the last one, which is like my recent project. Uh, has not been published yet. So only the people in this call have, I mean, will have the privilege to use that um, effect. So um, we can use on Instagram and Facebook. So um, moving forward to the next application of uh, augmented reality, we have gaming. So there are like two types of games that are very, very popular. They use AR. I have one of them on my phone, Angry Bird AR. So you have Angry Bird AR, you have um, Pokemon Go AR. So if you want me to show you how Angry Bird AR works, so Pokemon Go doesn't work on this part of night. I mean, part of the world. I don't know why they are cheating us. I don't know if it's racial or something, but I really don't care. But Angry Bird works in Nigeria. So if you want me to show you how Angry Bird works, can you say hi? Hi. 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 All right. Hi. All right. All right. All right. So um. Let's let's let me let me join with my phone and I'm going to share my the screen of the screen of my phone so we can like experience it. Um give me some moment I'm trying to join my phone. Let me share my screen. So um yeah, I'm starting to share my screen now. 
So let me know if you can see my screen. Can we see my screen? My phone screen. Can we see my phone screen, please? Yes, yes. All right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So let's yes. go to Angry Bird. Yeah. So let's see how it works. So I'm loading the app. So now this is Angry Bird. So it says start to start. So I have this. So now this essentially is it marker based or markerless AR? What kind of AR is this? Is it marker or markerless? Markerless. Okay, so I want you to defend your answer. If it is marker, tell us why. If it's markerless, tell us why. So, marker, why? I think it's marker. Yeah, it's marker. marker. At so least there's this the round circle. That round circle that is there. Um, so it's following that particular circle to work. So, uh, nah, it's actually it's right? it, is, it is markerless actually. So remember when we were talking about markerless AR, we said that it is it involves you like just scanning space. Now I'm not targeting any objects here. So everything on this screen is of the app. So I need to like tap to place a level, to place where I want the digital objects to be. So by the time I tap my floor, for example, which is the horizontal plane I was talking about. So you see that it appears. So I already set the stage for my game. So I can start playing just the normal way your, um, this thing works, your Angry Bird works. So I can tap on, let's say the first one here. So the bed comes here, jumps on the um, sledge, and I can, uh, or catapult. <laughs> So I can essentially like just play. I can move closer to see. Uh, yeah. I can drag, I can come out, then just play. Just do you play your normal angry bed. So this is how it essentially works. So I'm done with the game. So that is um, um that about the marker, I mean sorry, the angry bed game. So yeah, that was fun. So um mo moving forward. Uh, moving forward, we have um, the Pokemon Go. Like I said, Pokemon Go does not um, uh, exist or is not available in this part of the world. Now, so uh, you can get you can get the app um, from the link sent to the message uh, part of the meeting by John. So another application of um, AR is art. So we have art. So it is used in art galleries. So what essentially happens there is that, you know, unlike your typical art galleries where you go, you just see the picture and you leave, you understand? Sometimes some of us pay money to go to those exhibitions and all. But now to make the exhibition more fun and immersive, we use AR or AR is being used. Like you can see now, this woman just goes in front of an art, in an art gallery or let's say art museum. So she looks at the painting or a drawing or something, scans with her phone. Now this is a marker-based AR, so there's a target. The target is the image, then she scans with her phone and there's this digital object that appears. You understand? So this is also an application of AR. So it, it makes going to the, um, you can't see my screen. Oh, sorry. My screen is being shared. So what, what, what you need to do is, uh, let, let, me, let me stop sharing and share again. Stop sharing. Share again. Sorry, can you see my screen now? Yeah, sure. All right, great. Yes. Okay. So, like I, like I said, um, so you just go in front of the image or the art or the drawing or whatever in the museum or the gallery. You place your phone in front of it which I mean, make it your target, you scan, and it brings out the, it brings your drawings to life. It brings your drawings to what? To life. I think I know some of, some of us here who do um, art. Uh, for example, I have um, someone here who does mandala art. And for example, let's say when you're done with your art, you can use AR to bring that art to what? To life. It makes your drawing more interesting to people because it's as if they can feel and relate to what you've actually done. Um, speeding up, uh, you have also an application of this in marketing. 
So people who have products, let's say you have a product, you can make your products very, very engaging and interesting. So as you can see this um, example, it's called a Genie Treasure Bottle. So Genie Treasure, what they do is that they allow people to actually scan the labels on their bottles. Let's say I buy a bottle of Coke, for example. I can scan the label of Coke or Fanta to get an experience. So this Genie, this Genie's bottle, and um, Treasure Bottle, and when you buy it, and let's say you are drinking and you want to just, I mean, have fun, you can just scan, um, what's it called? The label, and you can interact with the, bot with the bottle. So this is actually fun. So tell me, if you have a product like this, especially for kids, or even for adults, everybody likes fun, right? You have this kind of product for everyone, and I mean, and let's say you have competitions in the market. Which product do you think people are going to use or want to buy? Mm -hmm. The one they can interact with or the one they'll just drink and drop the bottle. All right. Definitely the one they can interact with. Yeah. 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 yeah, thanks, man. So um, so this is another application in marketing or in business or product. So you have education. So some of us are medical, um, some of us are medical students, some of us are students in school, engineering students. Some of us are law. So law, I don't know how it applies to law, but I mean, one of the reasons why I, didn't, I don't like law is because it's too abstract for me. I like when I'm reading books and I see images and pictures and things I can relate to it. So for those of us who have this kind of text in schools and all, we can actually interact with our books in real time. And trust me, it's going to make us, like we're going to understand the topic or the course rather than our old lecturer bringing his old notes to come and explain with us, I mean, yeah, so I sit in a class for long hours. So this is more, um, it will last long in our heads and we're able to remember things and do awesomely in our exams. Now, so um, moving forward, we have application in medicine. So medical doctors use it to perform like surgery, scan, uh, their, I mean, patients and perform surgery. So these are some of the applications in medicine. Uh, you have um, logistics, for example, in um, people who do delivery, so they can, they have, they usually have serial, I mean, barcodes on their packages. So you can actually scan the barcodes to see um, some of the, uh, what's it called? To see some of the um, content, to know the uh, content of the, what's it called? Of the package to get more information about the package. So this is, this is some of the application of, uh, this is another application of um, um, AR. We have real estate. You know, in this time around, see, how many of you have friends? Or people on your WhatsApp, almost all of them are not selling land. Is it just me? Let me know. Is it just me? Is it, investors. I mean, <laughs> investor vibes, right? So, <laughs> everybody, right? So, I mean, for people who want to take their realtorship or real estate ship to the next level, they can actually adopt um, AR. So, or oh, someone said he's not, he, he cannot hear me. Sorry, can you hear me, guys? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, right, awesome. I can hear you. Oh, okay, thanks. So, um, so as you can see, so this person, like, I can call a client, for example, and say, oh, I have this landed property in Lekki, and I have, um, let's say, uh, Akiola Samuel. He wants to come and buy the 100 million property. But Akiola Samuel lives in, let's say, Toronto in Canada or Ontario. So... And he doesn't have the ability to come to Nigeria to come and inspect this. So you can just send him a link of the AR file to view the um the house in his space and voila, he picks his interest, he buys your product or buys the property and steady cash out. Sweet, you know, there's no there's no investor vibes if there's no money. So yeah, you get that complete investor vibes. So this is an um application of um um AR in our reality. I could say more. But John is already ringing in my head. I have a few minutes left to, for this presentation. So now, um, moving forward, um, we have building for AR. Like, how do we build for AR? What are the things we need to build for AR? So I divided them into two categories. I have design and I have development. So for design, you have different tools. You have Lens Studio. You have Spark AR. You have Adobe Aero. You have Blender. For development, you want to develop just the way you have your um, designer as i have developers the same way so you have unreal engine to develop you have unity you have Bufuria, you have ar kit you have eight wall you have wikitil web xr i have my web ar so um all these are 
tools and platforms you can build AR um, with. Um, we have AR career, like the career you can, I mean, get into. So the good thing about tech is that, I mean, there's this misconception that before you get into tech, you might probably know how to, like there was one time, design was not even part of tech, like design was not part of tech. People are only talking about people that write lines of code, JavaScript, C Sharp, C++, and all those stuff, of Python. So, um, but but now things are getting better. They're recognizing, I mean, they've been recognizing designers for the past few years now. So the same thing, you have content strategy, strategies, you have community managers. I mean, I know people who work at Microsoft who are actually, like their job is just community manager. And trust me, they are into tech, yeah? So because you cannot manage the, tech, the community if you don't understand the tech behind it. So you have project manager, you can be an AR designer, developers, content strategist, community manager, and project manager. And most importantly, like myself, you can be an AR evangelist. So moving forward, some of the top guys in the AR field, you know, in Nigeria, you say follow Uno Road. I mean, follow Usabi. So um, you can find these guys on Instagram, you can find them on Twitter and every other social media platform, LinkedIn and all. So you have Robert Scobo, you have Tom Enrich, you have um, Ellen Papajanis, you have Kathy Ackle, you have Tamara McClary, you have Daniel Newman, uh, you have Amberish Mitra, you have um, Raphael Grossman, you have Trevor Jones, you have Piper ZY, you have, um, you have um, David O'Reilly, you have Catalina Vilgas, you have Dave Ashby, you have Trevor Jones, and also you have other um, Dunaway. So all those people are top guys in the industry. They have amazing stuff, so bridging, building amazing products in the AR, I mean, sector, in the AR field. So I'm um, also virtual reality. Some of them, they combine both virtual reality or they generally take on to um, extended reality. And let's, a very, um, oh, sorry, I wrote travel. I'm sorry about that, a glitch, my bad. So it shows that I'm human, yeah? <laughs> So future of AR, I mean, from what we've seen, we see that the future is great. The future is like, the future of AR is very, very much near. Like, it is very near. We can already see the applications in our space. I mean, I was watching Spider-Man No Way Home uh, recently, and I saw that, um, like, they use AR. There was one part where Spider-Man was trying to, like, um, Peter Parker was trying to fix um, those guys and was trying to fix them from a machine he got um, in Appy's uh, room, that big machine that used clothes to cover. I don't know if you guys remember that scene, but so when he was using machine, he was trying to, he was actually looking at the um, the human shape in AR, actually. So it has different applications, even uses in movies, entertainment generally. So the future of AR is very near. In the nearest future, you will see so many things. Our cars will be AR, I mean, AR um, centered. Our mobiles will be AR centered. So we might never need a mobile phone to actually do all these things. I mean, things are going to be really, really great. I mean, when it comes to the future of AR. So let's anticipate and let's like try to like equip ourselves before that time goes. I mean, that time comes. So, um, closing words. Like I said at the beginning, Sun Kwang said, Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. Thank you very much for listening to a small boy like me. I really appreciate and I hope you all learned from the little knowledge I shared. And I'm sure uh, you guys have tons of questions. And I hope uh, a small boy like me will be able to answer. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you guys. Yeah, uh, it was amazing. I, I really don't know why I call myself a small boy though. But... Uh, I think uh, everyone got a lot of information from you and um, we're really grateful for you sharing all the knowledge you have basically. So if you have questions, uh, you can, if you can't talk, you can type in the chat box here, or you can just raise up your hand and we just let you speak, right? It can be anything. Oh, someone is already raising up the hand. But okay, wait, chill, chill, chill. Let me finish. All right. So it can be anything AR, right? It doesn't have to be in okay, what Ibrahim talked about. All right. I need to know the first page that is. Uh okay. 
we should start with Ramon. I, I hope I pronounce it well. So please, uh, you can unmute. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks to you, Ibrahim, and uh, to the organizers of this program. It's been an amazing session. I just want to uh, make a confirmation. The other day I was going through LinkedIn, and you know, uh, they, they were showing a football pitch where, on the side, uh, there is this ads that roll while the match is going on, and the person was trying to explain that while some part of the world are seeing a particular ad, some other parts are seeing a different ad from the same billboard right, that is uh, laid around uh, the football pitch. So I want to like, ask if uh, the concept behind that is also related to this uh, augmented reality we are discussing tonight. Did you get that? All right, so um, yeah, yeah, I did, I did. I mean, I saw the post too. So <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Abdramon. So there's this saying that there's a sweet line between augmented reality and artificial intelligence. So what they use there exactly is like artificial, I mean, artificial intelligence. So it also works based on location. So it detects a particular location and gives you like the desired result based on the kind of location you are. So essentially, I've, I've never been to the pitch before to see how those things move. But I think in this case, it is because those things are physically there, like they are devices. Um, those are boards, you, you can see. They are devices on the pitch. So I would say they are more of, um, they are more of artificial intelligence than AR. So, because the reason I'm saying this is, you know, augmented reality is placing digital objects where there is nothing there, like there's nothing there. But according to what we know, at those on those pitches, those boards or those um, boxes are already there. So it's just displaying those things to us. So I'd say it's more of AI to AR. Do you understand, Ramon? Ramon, are you there? Is this still there? Let me check. Yeah, it's still there. But, well. Okay. Okay, yeah, I hope yeah, I answered yeah. your question. <laughs> All, right, All right, next then. is um, Mahmoud. I hope I got it. Uh, you can speak. Hello. Can you hear Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask the question that for someone coming from a developer background, let's say front end, so is there like a journey map that you can share with us? Is there like a, like a journey map, a journey map, like a roadmap? Okay, so so essentially is that yeah. yeah, so essentially is the beautiful thing about learning anything these days is you have the internet like you have the internet and it helps you to like navigate through all these things like there are plenty of resources on how you can get started plenty of resources but let me just break it down so number one is that you have to identify where you want to go into so for example myself i'm a designer so I, I moved into the design aspects of AR to solve problems like I remember one of my first projects was uh, an airport um, tag luggage scanner. I don't know if John remembers that shady project that I did that time. So it's, um, it's not shady. <laughs> remember. All right. So you identify like what your strength is. For example, like I, you know, when I was doing the career path, there were different ones. And also when I was doing the tools, there were different tools for designers and developers. So you can identify, okay, I want to go into development. So you look at the tool, the best tool out there. For example, people use Unity to what? To develop um, um, augmented reality. So you can learn about how to use Unity to develop what? Augmented reality. Since you have a background in development or as a developer before, it will be a whole lot easier for you to want to transit or start it. Do you understand? Uh, so, um... 
Eugene also asked the same question, yeah. but um, I, I don't. I would like to ask you that if I may. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, um, if you want to get started in AR, right? Um, you can look at what everyone is doing with AR currently. So, if you're on Instagram, if you're on Snapchat, if you notice, uh, there's some filters that are going around, right? And then. Each of these platforms, they have um, tools that they use to make these filters. So for Instagram, you have your Spark AR. For Snapchat, you have your Lens Studio, right? And it's free. And um, it, they even went far to um, develop courses from beginners to intermediate to advanced. And you can just go through all those things. And if you're not satisfied, they even opened up um, YouTube um, videos for you to learn more and go past advanced. And if you're not satisfied, you can go into hardcore um, development using Unity and Unreal Engine, which also they have like free tutorials or courses and all that to learn. Uh, but I, I believe I believe the best way to learn is like you just do your research. Uh, you could just go on Google how to learn AR and you see everything you need. Whew, and that's it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thanks for your um, addition. So before we move or before we take another question, um, I worked on uh, the, the project I was talking about. So I, I know all of us, uh, most, some of us have watched Doctor Strange. So I kind of created like a filter around that. So we can actually, um, let me show us uh, how it works. So let me share my screen. So I sent the link, you can give it a trial. So the trial is for like about 50 people. So you can give it a trial. So um, let's go to Instagram. Uh, let's go to notifications. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Can you all see my screen? So this is like, I mean, you all know Dr. Strange, right? So the guy that, um, yeah, let me give some words. So, so how this works is, you know, Dr. Strange, when he wants to protect himself or when he wants to fight, he has this thing called the um, shield. So I created, a few, I mean, like an Instagram filter for that. So where you can be Doctor Strange, like you can actually be Doctor Strange, and um, you can, I mean, you know, <laughs> you can record this, send this, snap it, and I mean, yeah. So I think that was why John was calling me Doctor Strange. So you can actually um, use this filter. I sent, I sent the. The link to um, I send the link to uh the uh what's it called, the chat box of the um this is so we can we can always try it out and um, yeah snap share tag me everywhere <laughs> thanks so um my name is uh my I'll I'll put up my Instagram handle my Facebook handle and my uh what's it called, my LinkedIn handle too so that we can always like share tag follow like everything i'm get, get to connect beyond this time yeah uh, so please can i have a quick um, question yeah okay um sorry which um, software do you use for this doctor strange stuff you just shared now um i use the spark AR. no i mean the and the circle the design itself not the oh oh I, I designed for Figma. Figma? Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. That's nice. Well done. It's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So before we take the next question, right? I I am going to be sharing some links on the chat box. So the first one is going to be the feed, feedback form. So you tell us how you felt about this session, tell us um, 
what type of session you'll be looking forward to, right? And um, the next links are for learning more about the community. Yeah, so that's sure. it. So, so I, I dropped my LinkedIn um, uh, and do, I mean, my, I mean, link to my LinkedIn profile. I mean, you can, I mean, we can always all connect. I mean, I might have one or two things to learn from you. Uh, I'll share my uh, Instagram too as well. So, I mean, and Twitter, so we can um, get to uh, connect after this uh, time, time, time out. Um, all right. All right. So, um, thank you, Brian. Uh, next hand that is up is from Easy. Uh, I see it there. Uh, is it still there? If Easy isn't there, um, courage can go. Uh, courage, are you, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ibrahim and John, for this wonderful session. Right? Uh, I learned quite a lot. I learned quite a lot from what you have exposed us to uh that is augmented reality well i i just wanted to react to your your shade to law law students right uh, well done <laughs> well done well done sir <laughs> the shade is a reality bro <laughs> well 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 you 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 identify the challenge right in the legal yeah. industry so i um, I've already sent you a connection request on LinkedIn, uh, so I'll I'm open to yeah. So I'm open to us collaborating to see how we can use it out to solve some problems that are currently existing in the legal profession. And uh, I think sure there's there's a huge connection between technology and law. Oh, I, I don't I don't know if you are aware, right? Uh, there's a huge connection between technology and law and uh, currently um currently i'm the founder of technology law club in my school yeah. unn yes Agreed. so yes yeah, so we could i am open to a lot of partnerships on this particular discourse and more so thank you so much i just wanted to throw a shout out react to the shade and then um uh, <laughs> Throw in my proposal. <laughs> so, well done, Brian. Nice one. That's that like three in one, man. Nice one. Shots nicely shot. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, sorry. My mic was. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, my mic was misbehaving the other time. Yeah, so uh, I'm I'm a UI UX designer. Yeah, and I was wondering like how how could you like uh how could I like get into like AR. Because it seems really kind of fuzzy to me, and I didn't join this session from the start. So how can I okay. like get into your? Okay. Yeah. So you, you can start by like understanding, reading more about what AR is. Then also there are like tons of things you can come in as a UI designer. So for example, Hololens, all these devices I mentioned, they have interfaces like user interfaces so you can design for augmented reality interfaces and you can also design for augmented reality user experience but still you need to like learn about the technology then you find a creative way to solve people's problem using that particular i mean that technology i think it works for every other technology out there then you start learning about the tools you can use for that technology. So the tools for AR now, as a designer, you can work with um, uh, uh, um, you can work with Spark AR. You can work with um, Lens Studio. You can work with uh, you can work with uh, Adobe Aero. You can work with Unity and all. So, but I, I'm, t I'm telling you for free. Like the, the more you read, the better you know. And the better you become. So, I mean, just take your time, explore, and yeah, the sky's the starting point. And I think um, John shared some links in the message where you can get to start. So you can check um, those links out and um, start um, 
learning. I hope I, I was able to like answer a question easy. Easy either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very but, much. But not you want marry um hotel dollar picking. All right, man. So uh John, is there another question? Uh let me check. Also, your screen is focused on you, not your slides. Well, okay. Uh, sorry. So it looks like there's no other question. So we can um, call it a... Okay, someone just... You can speak. Uh, someone just raised up the... I can't find the person again. Is anyone okay? No one. Okay. Um, Basirat, are you, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so my name is Basirat, and I am a chemist. As I'm currently running my PhD in PhD um, in chemistry, and someone mentioned in the chat like um this um this stuff would have been very nice while we study chemistry like i've been teaching um taught chemistry to like junior ones myself i know there's like the bridge between the reality of what they are teaching us and you being able to imagine what they are telling you you get but really where do you think i know that you must have thought about this but i think i missed it somewhere where do one actually start to like okay even if in the future I plan to like create something like this that uh, okay, students can be able to like feel what they learn and um, which is definitely going to enhance learning. Like where do you think one can start? Of course, start from reading and learning about those stuff, but sometimes when you like okay. follow people we know would like you said, it makes things easier. <laughs> okay, so um what I'll say basically is um it's still related to what I said. So, but the reality is we all have different learning patterns. But to every learning pattern, there's a foundation, like the foundation that works for everybody. Like the foundation here is know what you want to learn, know why you are learning it, know the how to learn it and start practicing it. So the most essential thing for me, or that helped me grow is consistent practice. Like, even after you've learned something, just like keep practicing, like keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. All the resources John have sent to us, I mean, in the DM, I mean, so they'll be useless to us if we just, if we don't essentially like practice what is there. So the best bet for you to grow is when you practice. And our advice, like you look for problems and solve it with it. So, for example, Caleb, for example, now you have my courses. What Caleb does is, you know, there are plenty designers or there are plenty product designers. The way Caleb is going to solve a pro problem using um, design is going to be different from the way or the approach John is going to use to solve that design problem. And the same way every other person. So, it depends on your creativity now. But the foundation is that. John and um, Caleb are using the same software. They are using the same tool. They are using the same platform. They probably have watched the same YouTube videos, but the approach to solving that problem is quite different. It's based on their own creativity. So it's the rest is actually up to you. I don't know if you understand my point, Basira. I would like to answer that, though, but... All right, great. Let's Okay, if she's not answering, let me answer that. So, um, there are things you know, right? Thanks. Okay, and there are things you don't know that you know, or that you don't know that you don't know, you know, right? So, like, AR is a very visual field, right? And um, you have to know what's possible first before you can do what's not possible, you know, and then um, right now everyone is coming from different parts of design or different parts of 
you know any field you're in right and most of you have probably not in and anything about AR, right? So you need to be exposed to what AR is and what's possible. So Ibrahim is active in this space. So if you want to get started in AR, you can just take a look at what he's doing, right? He is also looking at other people, right? So like if you start from Ibrahim, you can find other people, right? And if you don't want to start from Ibrahim, you can just go on LinkedIn and just type AR or augmented reality and see what people are building or Twitter or Instagram, right? And see what's possible. And if you're in um, healthcare, law, and all those stuff, which you can type AR in healthcare, AR in law, and see what's possible like what are people building because it's still the same tools like if you are trying to build for social like social ar you know it's social media so look at the leading social media platforms out there in terms of visuals it's lens is snapchat and instagram so you see okay what tools are these people using right and you just find your way so like first things first is to know what's possible so is to go deep into what are people doing what's existing at this point right and just try to be the same thing or be something different from that but yeah follow Ibrahim. <laughs> <laughs> thanks man thanks for the addition thanks any other question uh okay if there's a question please ask i'm trying to end the recording so we call it session yeah, over. It's a minute past the time. <laughs> yeah.